Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're talking about the Spark and everything that you need to know about this drone to get up and get flying. All right guys, let's get into it. So in the description below, I've added a checklist. This checklist is gonna go through everything that you need to do when you first start flying with the Spark. I have basically the beginning until you've tried every function and everything in the Spark, and then it just comes down to practice. So I've built this checklist to make it very easy for you to get up and run and to make sure you try every feature that this drone offers and know how to use this drone. Because at the end of the day, you need to know how to use the Spark spark and every aspect about it so that you can just focus on practicing and just focus on the features that you care about to make the best videos. All right, so first things first, when you get your spark, it's going to show up just like this in the box. However, there's going to be a few plastic tabs covering the sensors in the camera. So just make sure you peel those off before you fly. There's one on the bottom, there's two on the front. With your propellers, they're already put on, but I'm gonna show you in a minute how you can take those off and put them back on. You can see how the drone is built. You got your motors with the propellers. These are detachable. You have your battery, which comes off, and then you have your camera and your gimbal. So be careful about this because this is what keeps your footage stable. All right, guys, let's go into a little bit more detail about the drone itself. When you look at the back of the spark, there's a button on the back of the battery. So to turn on the battery, you click the button once, let go, and then hold it. And what it will do is as it lights up the four lights, it turns on the drone. So to turn on, you click once and then hold until it turns on. So the four lights have to light up and then you can release. And the same thing for when you're turning it off, you click once and then hold as the four lights go away. And that will tell you when the drone is off. So also on the back of the spark, you're gonna find the charging port and your card slot. So if you just have one battery or you're charging your battery on the Spark itself, you're gonna be using a micro USB to charge the drone through the back end here. You can also put in your micro SD card in the back as well. This little flap just clicks out, just clicks back into place. So with the propellers, they're quick release. So you just press down on the propeller itself, hold the motor so that it doesn't spin, and then you just have to twist depending on which propeller you're using. It's a simple click in and out place and they're spring loaded, super easy to use. So on the bottom of the Spark, you're gonna have your bottom sensors, which sense the ground below you. And then you also have this square on the back end of it. And this is the second way that you can charge the Spark battery. So to take off the battery, you're gonna put your fingers on either side and there's these quick releases and you're gonna pull them back. Inside the battery compartment, you're going to find your Wi-Fi name and password. This is important because this is what you're going to use to connect to your drone. So make note of it before putting your battery back on. Okay, then on, on the front, you'll see the gimbal. This is what gets you all that smooth footage. And there you go. That is the entire layout of the DJI Spark. All right, so now let's get into setting up your Spark and doing everything that you need to do on the phone before we get to actual flying. So first, go into your settings. And what you're gonna go is into your Wi-Fi network and you need to find your Spark. So your Spark is gonna have a specific name. It's in the inside of your Spark. And right there, minus Spark 4609E7. Now I've already connected my Spark to my phone. So for you, you'll have to put in the password at this point. And to put in your password, you need the password that's on the inside door of your Spark. If you wanna change it, we can change it later. Okay, so now that your Spark is connected, let's skip over to the DJI Go 4 app. Okay, so now that you're connected, you'll see the Spark, and then towards the top where it says DJI Spark, you'll see a red bar here that says you need to do an update. So if you need to do an update, make sure you take care of all your updates right now before we get further into this, because you want your drone updated to the latest firmware. You wanna make sure everything is up to date because otherwise you'll have issues flying later. So what we're gonna do, you'll see down in the bottom left-hand corner, it says connected. So now we go to start flight. So you'll click start flight. You're gonna rotate your phone. And here we go. We are in the DJI app and there's a lot on the screen that we need to unpack. But first we're gonna go through the settings and then we'll come back to this main screen as we're ready to take off and we're ready to fly. So for your settings, look to the upper right hand corner, the three dots. You're gonna first click that and you're gonna bring up your general settings. So there's a bunch of menus here and let's go through these at one at a time. So the first one is your drone settings. So your main controller settings. So what the home point settings is, is that when you click the little triangle that allows you to set your current position of the drone as the home point. And what that home point is, is the home point at which that the drone is gonna fly back to if 
you run out of juice and you need to make a landing immediately. It's gonna fly back to you. It's gonna to return to home to the home point that you set here. Now this is an automatic setting. It, it's gonna set your home point every time that you start flying. If you wanna reset it, that's where you can do it at. So RTH at current altitude means return to home at current altitude. So whatever altitude that you're flying at, if you turn this on, then your drone is gonna to return to home at that altitude. Whereas when you go down to the next section, it says return to home altitude, you can set the altitude that you always want the return to home to be at. So right now mine's default at 30 meters. No matter where I'm flying, it's always gonna go to 30 meters and then it's gonna fly back home. And this says here that if you're more than 80 meters away, your obstacle avoidance is gonna be turned off. So guys, watch your battery life because you don't want your drone coming back for an emergency landing, a return to home and hitting a tree because you didn't set your settings right. You have a very low return to home altitude and it disables your obstacle avoidance because that could cause some major issues. So personally, I like to just leave these at the, the default 30 meters. I don't use the current altitude. For flight restrictions, you can start in beginner mode, and that's basically a very simplified way of flying. You can only go in a radius of 30 meters around the home point. So wherever you set that home point, like I said earlier, you're only going to be able to go 30 meters from that. It gives you a way to geofence yourself to keep yourself accountable as you're flying so that you don't fly too far and have an issue right off the bat. Guys, if you're just starting out, I'd suggest try using the beginner mode for a little while, get your feel for flying, and then take it off beginner modes and go fly. So when we click on the sensors, the next section, you'll see IMU and your compass. So for both of these, you'll see that there's a calibrate button right underneath. So calibrate the IMU, calibrate the compass. This is something I like to do every time I'm getting to a new location and flying for the first time. So if I'm traveling and it's been in my backpack, I'm always gonna come in here and calibrate the IMU. So guys, go ahead right now, calibrate both of these. So it's gonna take you through a series of instructions. So just follow these through and it will calibrate that properly for you. And then when you do your compass, it's going to take you through a series of instructions as well. If you're transporting the drone, always recalibrate it. Okay, let's go in the second menu. So the second menu is your visual navigation settings. Obstacle avoidance. With the Spark, there's some awesome obstacle avoidance on this drone. So basically what will happen is if you get too close to an object, it's gonna automatically stop it. And then if you're in return to home and you're less than 80 meters away, what it's gonna do is gonna go up and over whatever object that it senses. So it's gonna stop at the object and work its way up. This section is also telling you that the cameras for the obstacle avoidance have a 70 degrees horizontal field of view and a 54 vertical. And it also tells you that in ambient light, the 3D sensing system will still work great. This is just something I leave on, so you can leave that. Enable backwards flying. This is usually used when you're tracking an object and you wanna fly backwards and you wanna have it in frame as it comes towards you. I wanna enable backwards flying because this is a shot I like to do. If you're not comfortable flying, maybe it's not something you put on right away, but maybe down the road. The last section here is enable advanced gesture control. So this is the palm launch, the palm land, and the palm control. And guys, we'll get into that a little bit later. I leave that on because it's something that I like using on this drone. So now let's go to the Wi-Fi settings. There's nothing you really need to do here. This shows you all your settings for your current channel, what's stable, what's unusable. Guys, I just leave this. I don't switch to 2.4, I just leave on 5.8. Down here at Wi-Fi SSID, this is where you can change the name of your Spark, and the password is where you can change the name of your password. So I don't wanna change those. It is what it is. It's written inside my drone, so I'll just leave it as is. Virtual joysticks. So because I'm not using a controller with my Spark, I'm just using my phone. Your joysticks are on the phone and not on the controller. So you have different modes. You have mode one, mode two, and mode three. I personally always fly mode two. That's how I fly all my drones. I would say if it's the first time flying, play with all the modes and see what feels comfortable. And then down here, this is how fast your controls respond when using the virtual joysticks. At the bottom here, you can reset your controller settings back to the default. Okay, so here's the aircraft battery. So you can see right here, it shows your temperature, your voltage, your remaining power, your total capacity, your times charged. And then this is where you set your low battery warning. I always set mine at 30% because that gives me time to fly a little bit more and then get back. I know from previous drones, 30% is a great point. If you want to set it higher, you can. If you want to set it lower, you can. Just be aware that you don't want to set it too low, that you're flying too far away and the drone can't get back to you. So next we get into the gimbal settings. So you set right here, there's follow or FPV. If you have the goggles, you can use your head to control the gimbal. You can adjust your roll and then you can also adjust your pitch, which is the up and down and roll is 
your twisting. The factory settings should be good, but if there's any sort of leveling wrong with your gimbal, this is where you go in and tweak it. Okay, last is your general settings. So you can set your measurement units. Next is live streaming. So here is where you can live stream to Facebook, YouTube, some other places as well. Pretty cool feature. You have uh, map coordinates for China mainland. I am not in China, so that doesn't involve me. Geo system. When the geo system is enabled, basically what happens is it's giving you up-to-date information on where you can and cannot fly. I suggest you keep this on because if you're somewhere where you shouldn't be flying, then you shouldn't be flying. So always research where you're going to fly before you fly because you don't want to be flying in restricted areas. But this is another level of warning to show you where you're flying and what airspace you're in to know if you should be flying or not. Cache during video shooting. So what this does is it basically in the DJI app, it's going to save a version of the video that's recorded on your phone. The main footage is still going to be on the Spark. That's going to be the footage you're going to want to use. But sometimes if you want to do a quick edit or you just want to pull something off your phone, you can record as you're shooting. So that's a pretty cool feature. Sometimes I'll just take a quick snippet of what I shot that day, upload it to Twitter or something like that. And so you can set your, your capacity to higher here. And what happens is as your space fills up, it's going to stop recording. So just make sure... Make sure you turn on the ability to clear the cache automatically, or you come in here periodically and delete all the video data that's in there. And here's the other thing, you can record audio with your video. So what that's doing is it's just recording from your phone. So you can hear your conversation if you're having a conversation, or you can hear whatever's going around on your phone. It's interesting sometimes hearing what's going on. And then the last couple things is the device name. I've named mine Sparkle. And the about, which is just all your information about the aircraft, what versions, serial numbers, all that good stuff. So now we just went through all the settings that you need to tweak before we start flying. So one more thing before we get out and we start flying, I'm gonna go over a couple things on the screen. First, the red button here, that's your record. So that's recording your video. The button just above that switches you from video to the camera mode. So when you click that, now you're in photography mode. You click the white button, it takes a photo. You switch back there, the red button is video. So just make sure you're flying and you're taking either videos or photos, depending on what you want to do. A cool feature above this, see this little phone icon with the up and down? So now, as I tilt my phone, I'm panning up and down. I'm using my phone to control the gimbal. So as I'm flying, because my controls are going to be here and here, see the two dots and there's all my on-screen controls. Now I just have to tilt the phone to use my gimbal. So that's really cool feature. So what I did to bring up my on-screen controls, let's take them off, is this button down here on the left corner. And what that does is it brings up these two dots and now you have each joystick. You let go, they go away, and you push the button in the bottom left-hand corner and they're gone. If you hold for two seconds, you're now controlling the gimbal up and down with your thumb this way. When the controls are back on, you use the button in the upper right hand corner to do it with the phone, with the way you're holding the phone. So on the far right side, the three lines with the dots, this is your camera controls. So this is important because this is all your settings and this is everything you want when you're controlling the look of your image. So the first one, the little shutter icon, that's gonna be where you can switch from auto to manual. So you'll see right there, it's in auto mode. Let's click on the manual. So you can see the ISO here. So you can bump up the ISO all the way to 3200 and your shutter speed here. So we're gonna drop that down to 30 and there we have an image. Underneath this, you'll see the negative two, and that just tells you where the image's exposure sits at. So it's really dark, and so it's two stops under what the camera thinks your image should be at. So let's click back to auto, and now you get a plus and minus on this exposure value. So let's say I wanna go to minus two again here. So what it's gonna do is take the exposure that it thinks is correct, and now it's gonna drop it two stops. So if you're in auto mode, but you think it's too bright with the clouds, you might come in here and just drop it down to negative one, negative two, or you'll come in and switch to manual mode, and that's where you'll tweak the settings you're on your own. Using the exposure compensation here with the plus and minus gives you a way to make it really easy to, to tweak your settings for the auto mode. So from there, we go to the next screen, which is 
camera. These are all the different functions that you get to do with the Spark. So this is for photography. You have a single shot, you have multiple shots, you have AEB, you have a timed shot, you have a shallow focus, and then you have a panoramic. And there's two types of panoramics. You have a vertical and a horizontal pano. So you can create awesome panoramic photos using this feature. So let's switch back to video. Let's go to the last setting here. These are some more controls for your camera. I like to have my histogram on and you can just take that with your finger and drag it anywhere on the screen so that shows you the exposure. Display camera on screen display. So when I get out of my settings, you'll see up here in the upper right, now we have our capacity, what our frame rate we're shooting is, our white balance, our exposure value, our shutter, and our ISO. So I like to keep all that on screen just so I know what my settings are at all time. And then you have your white balance. So if you want to just shoot auto, shoot auto, but if you don't want it changing, so for example, if you're in a mixed lighting scenario, maybe some clouds and sun, the grid's a pretty cool feature. So it just lays a grid on your screen so you can keep things in a third. It's great for framing purposes. And then when you put the grid and diagonals, what you can do is now you have a center mark and you have your image cut up into thirds, which works great sometimes. I'm gonna turn those off, I don't want those. This menu is also where you're gonna format your SD card and you can reset all your camera settings to factory. So now in the bottom right hand corner is the little play icon. So that's where you're gonna see all the footage that you've shot. If you wanna go in and see the shots that you're getting, you just click the little play icon down here, you have photos, videos, and then you can favorite some of them that you like. Okay, the arrows with the dotted lines, this is your gimbal. So you just click on the arrows up and down or you, and it will adjust the gimbal up and down. Okay, the last few things on the screen, let's just go over this before we start flying. The little controller, this is your automation that you have with the Spark. So we'll go over these a little bit when we start flying. This button here with the, the H with the arrow, that's your return to home. So if you ever just want your drone to fly back to you, you're gonna click that. The button above that is the circle with the arrow. That's gonna be your takeoff button. Above that's a DJI. This will take you to your DJI home screen. Next to that is your flight information. So right now we're indoors, so we do not have any GPS lock on. Once we're outside, this will say GPS, and you'll also see that with the little icon next to that in the ATTI, we're in Addy mode at the moment, but that will turn to GPS when we go outside. Underneath that, you have your green bar, and that is your battery life. The dots are your return to home. So further right dot, that's when you're at 30%, and then the left dot, that's when you're at 10%. And 10%, it's an emergency and you shouldn't be flying. You should have the drone down by that point. Okay, last couple things. We have your satellites, how many satellites your drone can see. Then you have your Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi strength. And then last is your battery. So we are at 62%. You can click that. It goes right into the battery to see all the information. Okay, guys, that was everything about the controls in the phone. So let's go outside and let's start flying. Okay guys, when you get outside, the first thing you wanna do is find a big open space where you can practice. You're not gonna worry about people, buildings, anything like that. So the first time you're going out and flying, make sure you have a space that you can just practice. Go find somewhere that's out away from people, go find somewhere that's out on your own. Cause basically what you wanna do is just hang out and practice, burn through a few batteries and just play around with all the features of this drone. First things first, we got the drone. We got a little baby sparkle here. And we're going to open up the wings because you don't want them getting stuck somehow. All right, now he's ready to go. What you do is you find a flat place on the ground. You click your button once and then hold. And then what you'll do is you'll hear the fans start running and you'll hear the beeps. And now Spark is ready to go. What I like to do first is put my phone on airplane mode and then I open up my DJI app. If we've already connected, you'll see that it automatically connects to your drone right now. So I'm just waiting for the app to load. And yes, it says enter device. We're gonna turn on our Wi-Fi because we are on airplane mode. So now we're gonna start the flight. You're gonna enter device. Make sure on the top of your screen that it says ready to go GPS. What you'll see next to that is the GPS signal and it will show 11 satellites for me right now. So I've got a ton of satellites. It shows your battery life, all that good stuff. If you have a controller, you can point both joysticks inwards or outwards to take off the drone as well. But I suggest when you're a first time flyer to click that button so it can take off. What you do is let it take off and it will hover. And there you go, you're ready to start flying. So now when you're up in the air, hit that button one more time and it will land. So now I'm gonna swipe to land and baby spark is gonna land on its own. 
just like that you've landed Spark and Spark is good to go. Okay, I always suggest that when you first get out and it's the first time flying that you take your drone off, you drop it back down and you turn it off just to make sure everything's functioning properly. So let's take it off one more time. So we're gonna do the same thing, swipe to take off. It's gonna come four feet in the air, it's gonna hover. And now I'm gonna bring my on-screen controls on and I, I'm just gonna drop it down. And I'm just gonna drop it down until it starts hovering keep holding the down and then spark will drop on its own and just land. So that's the two ways to take off and land. When you're using the phone, you can't take off using the joysticks. You can't push them both inwards or outwards to take off the drone. You just have to use the, the takeoff function on the app itself. But if you're using a controller, point both, both sticks inwards, point both sticks outwards, and it will also start up. And then you just push up on the joystick to take off. So guys, that's taking off and landing. That is the essentials of everything that you need to know to get up and start flying. So now it's time to just play with the drone and practice. Okay guys, so let's go over the palm. This is a pretty cool feature and it's only on this drone. You're gonna get the drone turned on, wait for Spark to, to warm up, get ready to go. You're gonna click the button on the back twice. Okay, the lights will flash green. You'll hear a beep. And then he'll take off. He's gonna raise back up. And then what you do is you put your palm out. It's gonna grab onto your palm. And then you can just use your Jedi Force to basically move the drone wherever you want to. Gonna walk towards it. We're gonna come backwards. And baby spark just follows me along. And when you're ready to be done with your palm flying, you just drop your palm, put your hand underneath, and spark will land right in your hand. That's how you palm fly. Okay guys, so we just went over the basics of flying, taking off, getting going. From here, now all you gotta do is just work on your skills. So flying up, down, left, right, using some of the automation modes. We're gonna go over that in one second. I'll explain what each automation is gonna do for you. And I just want you to go out there and experiment and play because that's what it's all about. When you have a drone like this and you wanna get good at it, the way to get good is to just play. Is you just gotta experiment, you gotta burn through batteries, you just gotta keep flying and flying and flying. Guys, it's a cool little drone. And to turn it off, when you're all done, click the button once, hold it, wait for Spark to turn off, and you're good to go. All right, guys, now let's go over what all the automations are and what they do. And then I want you to take a look at the checklist that I've developed for you. Go through step by step. Do everything on the checklist because once you're done with that, you'll have tested everything up with this drone. You'll have tested every feature. You'll have it set up. And guess what? Then it's just practice. So let's, let, let's get after it. When you click the automation feature button on the main screen, it's gonna bring up this screen. So this main screen has six options. There's normal flying and that is just your normal flying. Okay, so whenever you're in your automation feature and you wanna go back to just normal flying, you're gonna go into this menu and click normal. Okay, quick shot is a really cool feature that the Spark has. And basically, quick shot gives you the ability to create awesome looking shots with the click of a button. So when you do this, there's different ways. There's one that's in orbit, there's one that's in orbit as it takes off higher, and then there's a rocket that takes off straight above you and keeps the camera pointed at you at all times. Active track is basically the ability to grab onto an object and track it no matter where it moves in the screen. The spark will automatically track the subject and always keep it center frame. Tap to fly is really cool, so you just can tap on the screen and the spark will fly there. So tripod mode keeps your shots super still and gets you that really precision flying. And the last one is gesture mode. This mode's pretty cool. You can use your hands and take a photo. All right, I know that was a ton of info. We've gone over a lot about this drone, but guys, I want to make sure that you know how to use it and you know how to use it properly so that you can get the best footage possible. From here, it's all about practice. The best way to become a really good drone pilot is just practice, practice, practice. So go through the checklist that I've provided you, make sure you know how every function works on this drone, and then just get out there and practice. 
And then from there, check out some of the other videos on our channel. I have tons of videos on different flying techniques, more advanced stuff. So once you know how to fly and you've practiced and you've got the basic moves down, now you want to start getting creative. And I've got some videos just for you that will take you to the next level and show you some really cool creative shots that you can get with your spark. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you like this and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. Guys, leave a comment below. Is there any feature that you'd like to see more detail on? Is there anything that you don't quite understand yet and you need some more information? Let me know in the comments. I'll try to make sure to get back to everyone and answer whatever questions you have. So guys, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Happy flying.